Welcome to season number five of the Colo Colo Takeover here in South America. I wanted to take you to the Club Vision page to show us that they want us to be competitive in the Copa Libertadores. Is that be competitive as in get knocked out in the qualifying stage? Is that, I don't know, break away from the group stage and, and reach the semi final? I don't really know. They, that's really unspecific and yet it's a massive requirement, but so far, we're pleasing them. It's all we can ask, I guess. It's all we can do. But it be so far in what we have been doing. Now, we are starting to bring in some new players. I wouldn't say we're bringing in players that are making us the best team in South America, but we are definitely building a squad here in Chile, and I would say we're starting to dominate domestically. We just you just can't get hands on the cup, can we? That's just one thing we are uh, managing to just avoid all the time. Now, one big out is Yersin Chacon is leaving us during this season. He will be joining Porto on the 1st of July, of course, their European transfer window isn't open yet, but for £1 million, he did not want to sign a new deal and his contract runs out at the end of this, this year. So I think £1 million is actually not a bad deal for us to sell him on. We, of course, made a bit of a profit on him, only signing for 275k. Not bad. He has done okay for us. Not amazing, uh, but we have definitely replaced him. And let's take a look at some of the transfers that we have brought in. Starting off, we've brought in two players from Universidad Católica. Benjamin Berrios is one of them. He plays right back or CDM. Now, the best thing about that is that he plays natural in two positions and he's actually quite good in both. He's not a first teamer by any stretch of the imagination. He's happy to be a fringe player, but he has great player traits. He has fantastic attributes for both roles. And if you take a look, only 250K, and he used to play for us to begin with. He literally came through the youth academy here at Colo Colo. So yeah, homegrown. We like that. We've brought him home. The other player that we bought from Catolica is Ignacio Saavedra. 1.7 million pound. This guy also plays in that CDM role. However, much better player, easily one of the best players that we're going to find. And he's Chilean, which is hard to come by finding a player of this quality. It's got to the point now where we found every player that we can from abroad, from signing uh, to, to for, who is Chilean, to come to Colo Colo. And we can't get them if their value is too high or we can't offer them enough wages. So we're just having to just pinch players from rival clubs. And it's been working, to be fair, because, I mean, this guy's amazing. Dictates tempo, looks for pass rather than shot, tries to play away out of trouble and refrains to taking long shots. All really good player traits for a CDM. And his attributes are 14 passing. It is very good. That he's very good indeed. Of course, it is a little bit expensive, 1.4 million pound, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. We had the money to spend. We have done that. 500k on this man, Johnny Quin Quinones. Quinones, I think that's how you say it. It's another centre midfielder, and of course, we've got a couple of roles in there now. And this guy is a squad player. He's Ecuadorian. Uh, he's very well rounded, good pass and good long shots. Very different to the type of player that we have just seen, and very different player traits. But again, I really like bringing him into the club. However, I actually think this is probably the best signing of this transfer window. Marcelo Allende. He is, of course, Chilean again. And he plays on both sides and he is very talented indeed, especially technical. Technically, he's one of the best in our team. Uh, we've given him an important player role with a high wage for us and we have paid 900k from a Uruguayan team to bring him back to Chile. He started off at a couple of clubs here that we can see, but we've brought him back to the Chilean league for a very good reason. I think he's, he, I think he's fantastic. So he, we welcome him in, only five at five of him as well, as a very solid player. The final signing that we have brought in is Christian Moya. He is a centre-back, a Colombian centre-back that we have brought in. He probably is going to be a starting player as well from Nacional. But we have played eight games so far with him. And he's got one goal and one player of the match with a very high average rating for a centre-back. So I'm excited by these signings. I think we've done very well in the transfer window. Before we take a look at the tactic and see how we got in on our first games, this video yet again is sponsored by my friends Spitch. Yes, yeah, Spitch, of course, is brand new to the market. is fantasy football and we have been very much enjoying ourselves in the Community League. Have you joined the Community League? yet yeah, let me know down in the comment section it is of course only for the uk and ireland and you do have to be 18 or over and take a picture of your id for to make sure to verify your account but once you're in it's very easy to use and it's free to play and yet you can still win up to seventy thousand pound on a weekly basis i've won money i didn't win seventy thousand pound i'm not buying myself a new car or anything however i did win money and i haven't put a penny into it all the statistical analysis is on the app so you don't have to leave the app 
to go find anything out. And of course, once you've built your team, you can join community leagues, join against your friends, or even join my league. The link for that is down below underneath the link to join Spitch. So click in that link, which again is free, will mean that you'll support me as a content creator and you'll be supporting yourself because you're giving yourself some entertainment. Can you defeat me? Because right now I am winning this league very easily. I'm finding it way too easy. All you guys are just chumps. You cannot defeat me. And dad is even in second place. So battle it out on a weekly basis. You don't have to have joined at the start of the season. You can still just do it on a weekly basis. If you forget, so be it. It doesn't matter. Join Spitch if you can. Thank you very much for sponsoring today's video. Yes, tactically, we're sticking with this asymmetric tactic because it, obviously it did very well for us last year. And I think it covers all areas of the pitch. If we take a look at the analysis side of it, there's not really any weaknesses that we need to worry about. So I'm actually quite happy with going with this tactic and maybe a few little tweaks if I see something here or there, or if we bring in a player which uh, suits a specific style of play. But for now, Let's keep rolling with it. And this has mainly been the lineup that we have been using in the game so far. Let's take a look how we've been getting on. So, started off with a 3-1 victory, a 1-0. We had a 1-0 draw there against Copper Sal. 3-0 in the Copa Libertadores. Now, I'm going to take a look at this Copa Libertadores group because we have Flamengo in that group. So far, we have played four games and we have lost one against Flamengo, but we have also beat them 3-1 as well. Uh, they are defeating us right now on goal difference by one, but it does look like with just two games left, we should qualify. We should be getting some points either against Zamora from Venezuela or Wanderers uh, in Uruguay because we've already played Flamengo twice. We've got to be happy with that. And if I move over to the fixture view so you can see who's been scoring the goals, you're going to see a lot of the name Samson Akanyula, uh, who has been getting quite a lot of goals for us at the start of this season, including here. He got himself a lovely little hat trick uh, against Union La Calera. And to be honest, he's been fantastic for us at the start of this campaign. Now, if we take a look at what he has actually been doing, uh, the goals wise, six goals in six league appearances from his 25 and 29 last season. And so far, 13 in just 11 appearances, one off the bench in all competitions. So he has been fantastic. And if we take a look at the competition wise, that does see us sit in top of the league already six points clear. Not bad at all. Now, I'll bring you back in July to show you how things have played out so far yes we did qualify we finished in group h uh, second to flamingo we actually drew one of the last games there against the more at one all but it was enough to take us through and we have actually already played the first leg of the next round in the league however we've been doing absolutely fantastic so we've lost two games so far against catalica and until fagasta but other than that we have been dominating and we are still seven points clear at the top there. Lazaro with 11, Akinula with 10. We've been playing very well indeed. In the Chilean Cup, however, we have gone down in the first leg 4-2 to Catalica. It's just, they must be our bogey team because they do seem to get the better of us. Uh, we have also gone down to 10 men as well, so he will miss the next leg. But 4-2 still very much a capable uh, result to come back from in the second leg. It's just a shame that we lost the home leg. Samson Akinula there with a great goal, by the way. Still, he's been banging in like we've seen in all competitions. Lazaro has also been chipping in quite often. But defensively here was the main problem. Although we are still creating a lot of chances defensively, sometimes we make very silly mistakes. Lazaro, fantastic in that shadow striker role so far this season. We need him to keep up in that in the games in the uh, Copa Libertadores because we have now, we go up against the Colombian side, America de Cali, who could be quite a tricky team. Now, I said that we've played the first round. We haven't done so yet. This is who we are up against. Uh, America de Cali. They have Carlos Cortez as their key player. He is phenomenal. He's a very good player indeed. A wage budget that we can't even offer to any players when we bring him in. So it's not like we can go out and buy this player off types of clubs like this. So it is going to be a very tricky time. Let's see how we do. Yeah, unfortunately, even at home again, we concede four goals. America de Cali are absolutely quality. It must be said. I did expect to struggle against the Colombian teams. I know Colombia have a plethora of fantastic players, but I thought after a while, we should, by now as well, like fifth season, we should have got to the point 
where we can beat these teams quite comfortably. But it seems like the Argentinian clubs, the Brazilian clubs, we do all right against. We can get good results against them. But a 4-1 loss to the Colombian team is something I did not anticipate whatsoever. Is Colombia becoming a bit of a force in South America? Because I was hoping we would be the next best thing after Brazilian clubs. I thought the Argentinian clubs can be good, but we can be better than them after a few years. But it seems like the Colombian clubs are even one step better. One of the bad things about that as well was Lazaro is now out of the second leg with a hamstring strain. And in the second leg of the quarterfinal of the cup, we were knocked out after only beating Catolica 1-0. So it isn't looking great. Now we fought bravely against America de Cali when we went to Colombia and visited them. We managed to score two goals, but unfortunately that just not isn't enough. A 4-3 on aggregate loss to the Colombian side. It's disappointing, but it's promising at the same time. Like we scored too late on to, to make it a bit of a comeback, really. We scored in the 90th minute there with Samson Akinula. Now missing players like Lazaro definitely didn't help because Yara there was 6.3, but you can see how well our defense reacted in that second leg. If only they could have done it in the first leg because we were dominated as well. 1.59 XG from America to Cali and yet they didn't score. We only had a 0.89 and scored two goals. So the, the, the result doesn't tell the story. The statistics suggest that they battered us yet again. But it wasn't good enough. So now all we have to focus on is the league. We've just had a 2-0 victory there against Cobrasal. And if we take a look at the league itself after being eliminated at the quarterfinals of both other competitions. We are absolutely storming this. Seven points clear of Italiano in the second spot. Catalica there in the third spot. We are nine points clear of. So I think we go towards the end of the season and see how this plays out. And yet again, we claim champions. We lost four eventually across the league, including the last game of the season against Katalika, which means we lost both games against them. But I still think this is a great result for us across the league campaign because we did win it by seven points. That's the, th that's the third in a row now. Four out of five that we have won across these seasons. Not bad for Colo Colo at all. And if you look at average rain, we dominated that. Marlon had the most assists from left back. Akinula had the golden boot for across the league with 13. It was very good considering we missed Lazaro for quite a portion of that league campaign. So ultimately then the goal for next season is to do better. We need to kind of find a way of doing better in cup competitions because right now across the league campaign, we are absolutely fine. We're laughing. If we take a look at the, the goals, 36 were scored in 39 games from Akinula, 16 from Lazaro. Juan Chavez, we mentioned him in the last episode. What a signing this could be. He's developing very well. He's now 20 years of age. He's been playing his part. 27 appearances and he has scored a lot. Eight goals just in the league campaign. But if you take a look non-competitively, 57 in 31 for this youngster Juan Chavez. It might be the time that we think about placing a second player up top, bringing him in and seeing what he can do on a regular basis because he could be the missing piece of the puzzle. And with all of these players leaving on free contracts, it does free up quite a lot of wage budget space, including 51 thousand pound per week that we already have with a 3.78 million pound transfer budget it's the biggest we've been given so far which means we can create the most movement and try and progress as much as possible so tomorrow's episode is a massive one i'll see you then bye bye